out, right? They hear us. Yay, they hear us. Great news. Brave lads. Hurrah. The question, of course, is which men are going to show up first? Are they your men? Asks Yeargam on 278. Are they your men? He asks a second time. It's Ehrlich who will respond with a laugh, the idiotic, chattering laugh of a man unstrung with hideous fear. Ehrlich, of course, realizes at first, we're jacked. We're totally jacked. Wolves. The last word of the story. Now, of course, let's turn to level two and three and ask what's going on here now that we know full well level one and a summary of the story. Well, at 2A, the obvious messages and themes here immediately come to mind, right? That is to say, people resolve conflict often by violence, and it only leads to more violence. Remember what the great thinker uh, MLK had to say in his famous essay, quoting Gandhi, an eye for an eye makes everybody blind, right? In other words, when you resolve conf conflict through violence, through vengeance, that kind of thing, it is inevitable that it, you're, somebody else is going to one-up, and then we have this issue of feuds, right? Uh, a second possible message here is that it's strange sometimes that the worst of enemies can become friends, right? So it happens sometimes, but it often happens because of what? Well, some kind of major challenge for survival, and then all of a sudden people go, you know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and become pounds. Another major message here is, of course, the question of determinism. The things that happen in your life, are they predetermined? For example, ball players in the house, this question. Before you compete for your, go for your game, is the outcome, the winner or the loser, already been decided? Or do you decide your own fate? Right? And how do you balance the question of, well, yeah, but you didn't decide when you would be born, did you? Hmm. Very interesting. At level 2B, obviously we've got all kinds of great things going on in the story as we pointed out. We've got issues of conflict as we have said, multiple different kinds of conflict. What for you is the chief conflict in this story? What is for you the climax of this story? Many have pointed out that the climax of this story is actually the last word of the story. Did you think, as you were making predictions as you were reading, did you think that one of the two men's parties were about to show up? Were you surprised with the word wolves? Did it kind of shock you in some way uh, when you heard that for the first time in your reading? Of course, the question of irony is huge. What is ironic about the fact that two men who hate each other's guts get penned under a tree and then have to become friends? What is ironic about the fact that finally when they are together and harmonious, they start calling for help and the wolves show up? What does this seem to suggest in this story about the idea that right about the time we think we've got stuff figured out, nature has a tendency to step in and screw it all up? Of course, the two symbols of nature, a tree, a fallen tree, and of course, the wolves themselves, right? All right, let's jump to 3A quickly. What comes to mind is other texts. I've mentioned several already. I think the Iliad stands behind this story clearly, but obviously the most dangerous game comes to mind. What is for you your favorite game that you play that puts two people against each other? What is your favorite movie where enemies become friends? And ask this question. In your favorite movie where enemies become friends, what leads them to decide to do so? Is it, in fact, the potentiality that both parties could be annihilated or die without the help of the other one? By the way, I'll also point out here at, at uh, 3A an observation that was made by the great Joseph Campbell, the great mythologist, who in his classic work, Power of Myth, he made this observation. On our planet, we will continue to struggle with conflict resolution, fighting wars, destroying our planet environmentally, etc., etc., until finally the moment when everyone on the planet comes to realize if we don't work together, we're going to end up destroying our water, our air. And it will be at that moment, and Joseph Campbell predicted, only at that moment that finally we will stop trying to resolve our conflicts with war and fighting and violence, and we will begin to actually come together. The thing that will require all of us to come together will be the fear of annihilation. All of us will lose in the end. Of course, at 3B, lots of questions here. Let's ask several for you. 
Do you believe in the idea that everything that happens in your life is somehow predetermined? Or do you believe in the idea that you have a choice about what happens in this world? Question two. What are your thoughts about enemies becoming friends? Can you remember a time in your own life when that happened or you witnessed it in some way that, you know, people who really didn't like each other finally became close? I will tell you as freshmen that many seniors will report that the friends that they had at the beginning of high school were not the friends that they had at the end of high school. And the enemies that they had at the beginning of high school were not the enemies that they had at the end of high school. It's a fascinating question. You can begin to kind of plot that trajectory as we go. I hope that your study of the interlopers will at least uh, maybe pike your interest to take a look at other Saki stories, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed the irony of the ending of this story as well. Thank you.